Mark, I'd love you to talk about, and you've been talking about this for years, but I'd love for you to talk about it in the context of this podcast. You know, you have a few articles on the internet saying that when it comes to belly fat, there are two aspects. Number one, we have to understand that it's not your fault. And for the people that are listening or watching on YouTube, I'd love you to explain what do you mean by that, that it's not your fault. And then along with that, there's so much that's in your control that you can do. Let's start with the first piece of it. Why is it not your fault if you are carrying a ton of belly fat or excess fat from a medical standpoint? Well, from a medical standpoint and from a scientific standpoint, from a nutrition standpoint, the dogma is really clear. Calories in, calories out. The reason you're overweight, the reason you have belly fat is because you eat too much and you don't exercise enough. Hashtag, you're a lazy glutton, <laughs> okay? That is just a bunch of malarkey. And here's why. We know that all calories are the same in a laboratory. So you say, oh, when you say all calories are not, the, are not the same, Dr. Hyman, who are you to say that? This is, you know, the first law of thermodynamics is all energy is conserved. And so calories in, calories out, this is the way it is. This is just science. And I'm like, well, yes, you're right in a vacuum. So what, what the first law of thermodynamics says, for those of you who are not up and up on your physics, is it says that energy is conserved, quote, in a system, meaning a closed system, like a vacuum. When you drop a pound of feathers and a pound of lead off a bridge, the feathers float through the air and the lead goes crashing down. If you drop them in a vacuum, they drop at the same exact rate. Why? Well, they don't have to contend with air. The feathers have to contend with air. When you eat food, it has to go through your metabolic processes. It has to deal with your microbiome. It has to deal with your genetics. It has to deal with your hormones. It has to deal with your brain chemistry. It's interacting all with that all the time. So if you eat 1,000 calories of broccoli or drink 1,000 calories of soda, they're going to have very different effects on your body versus if you burn them in the laboratory, they release the same amount of energy. I mean, a calorie is defined as basically the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one liter of, of water, one degree centigrade. That's it, right? So yes, in a lab, they're the same. So the message that it's about eating less and exercising more misses the central science, which has overturned that, that theory that all, that all calories are the same. And this is what we call the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. And the key proponent of this has been Dr. David Ludwig, who's a colleague and friend of mine, who's one of the most published, researched, and uh, esteemed scientist in the field of nutrition today from Harvard Medical School. And he's written, you know, really in depth about this. Uh, you can read his articles on Medium. You can go to PubMed and find his work. He wrote a very extensive review of this called The Carbohydrate Insulin Hypothesis and essentially shows through the science that when you eat a carbohydrate-rich diet, if you are genetically susceptible, which is most of us on the planet, okay? Some aren't, but, but probably 80% of us are. You are carbohydrate intolerant. And when you eat X amount of carbohydrate in the form of sugar or starch, not talking broccoli carbohydrates here, it raises your insulin more than someone, for example, like me who doesn't have that problem. So it's, it's really important to understand that if, if you are consuming starch and sugar uh, in any form, that you are driving this, this, this pathway of weight gain, central weight gain, inflammation, oxidative stress, blood clotting, hormonal dysregulation, brain chemistry changes. And it's, it's really based on the information in the food because food is not just calories, it's information, it's instructions, it's code. It can upregulate your genes in, in, or downregulate them. It changes your microbiome, it changes your immune system, it changes your hormones, your brain chemistry. We have tremendous power to understand now the quality of our food determines the quality of our health. The quality of the information in the food is what changes the messages that get turned on or off in your body that regulate everything, not just your weight. So it's so important for people to understand that when they're eating food, not only are they eating calories, but they're eating information. The second thing around it's not your fault, you're fat, is we live in a toxic nutritional landscape. It's almost impossible to go out there and hunt and gather in America and find stuff that's not going to kill you, right? I mean, I travel, I go to airports. I mean, they've gotten better for sure, but I never travel without my emergency food pack in my, in my bag. I carry protein and fat in my bag.
for at least a day's worth of food. So I don't have to get stuck in a food emergency, but it's rough out there in America. And, and we are living in a toxic nutritional landscape where the easy choice is the wrong choice and the hard choice, uh, is the good choice. It's a, such an important reminder for everybody who's watching, because I think there's so many individuals and Mark, I'm sure you've had patients and I'd love to talk about a case study. There's one to, that comes to mind, somebody who suffered tremendously with, um, excess weight and specifically belly fat and what they did to get better. But there's so many people that carry around the guilt because they've been told their whole life through the media, maybe even their doctor, their well-intentioned doctor, who's just repeating what they learned that, um, they need to finally get some willpower and get their life together. And so many of these people have tried so hard. They tried so hard and they tried so many different things, but because they are trying the standard advice, which is just eat less and exercise more, uh, which is the same advice that they gave to the people on the show, the biggest <laughs> loser. I'd love for you yeah. to talk about that and what we've uh, yeah. found out from uh, that experiment. They feel like it's it's not it's not working. So talk a little bit about the biggest loser, and then we'll go into a, a case study. Well, the biggest loser was a problem because people were you know motivated by money. They were given extremely low calorie diets. They were pushed beyond their limits in exercise, and they were able to achieve some significant weight loss, which you will do. And the problem is when you do that, you know it's it, your body is in a a state of crisis, and as soon as you stop it's going to rebound and you're going to gain back that weight and often more because often when you lose fat, you lose fat and muscle. When you gain back, you just gain back fat. So you could be basically the same way as you were when you started your diet and actually burning less calories. <laughs> so that's, that happens to people. And you see all the people who are really overweight or struggle with yo-yo dieting their whole life. You say, well, they go, I don't really eat that much. I don't know what's going on. And they're right. They're right. Their metabolism has slowed down so much because they've lost so much muscle and they've screwed up their metabolism. So you know, if you lose weight, you have to work on your muscle mass, which is important. And that has to do with the quality of the food you're eating. But the, the, the whole idea that you can go on these crash diets and I, I mean, I never put people on a calorie restricted diet. Never. I never say count your calories, cut your calories, don't eat too many calories. I don't even say the word calories. Like I know it's just so irrelevant. And I've had people lose hundreds of pounds. Uh, and, and, and it works because when you, when you use science, not willpower, it's easy. People aren't hungry. They feel nourished. They feel satisfied. They don't feel deprived. It's sustainable. They want to continue it. They feel good. You've got to use science, not crazy, crazy amounts of, of external force like or internal force like willpower to actually get you to do it. So Mark, let's get into that case study. And is there somebody in mind that you want to talk about and what they did to radically reduce the amount of belly fat, which then besides looking better and everybody cares about looks, it actually reduced their risk of many of the chronic diseases that we talked about earlier. Well, this is, this is a great example, Drew, because it, it illustrates all the bad crap that can happen to you if you eat sugar and starch your whole life, <laughs> really. And then it illustrates how quickly it turns around if you change. Because, you know, think about it. We spend 40, 50 years getting sick. It can take a few months to get better, which people don't realize. It's really dramatic. So, uh, you know, it takes a while for food to kind of screw you up, but it can take very quickly for you to get fixed by it. And this woman was named Janice. She came to see us at Cleveland Clinic. She was 65 years old and she had every kind of chronic disease except cancer and dementia. I mean, she had high blood pressure. She had pretty bad heart disease with, with needing stents and all kinds of procedures. She had heart failure because her heart muscle was damaged. She had type 2 diabetes on insulin. Her kidneys were starting to fail. She was getting fatty liver. So pretty much her whole body was starting to shut down and she came in pretty desperate and she was a fairly well-educated woman, but her family just had no food sense and they grew up on junk and she thought this is just what you eat, processed food. She never knew how to cook or do anything. And so within, within three days, and she was on insulin for 10 years, within three days of changing her diet to a whole foods, anti-inflammatory, phytonutrient rich, high fiber high quality fat diet, essentially the 10 day detox diet, which I wrote a book about in 2014. Essentially within three days, she was off insulin. In three months, she was off all her medication, her heart medication, her blood pressure medication, her diabetes medication, and her numbers normalized. Her blood sugar went from 
way out of control, A1C of 11.4, I think, to 5.6. So just to put in perspective, if a drug causes a one-point drop, it's a blockbuster benefit. Like, wow, this is amazing. This drug, new drug lowered A1C by one point. Like that's how of a sensitive scale, it's what we call a logarithmic scale. So it's not a linear scale. It's like exponential scale. She went down from 11 to 5.6. You don't see that with medication. There's no drug that can do that. Second, her, her blood pressure normalized. She got off her blood pressure pills. Her heart failure, which we measured on a echocardiogram, reversed, which you never see. Like you just don't see that in traditional medicine unless you get a heart transplant. Her kidneys got better. Her liver got better. And she lost like 45 pounds in three months. And then she went on to lose 116 pounds and looks like a completely different person. And she was on her way to the graveyard by way of a heart transplant and a kidney transplant. And then she avoided all that and is doing amazing. And back to being a, a powerful contributing me member of her community. So that's the power of food when you understand that. And she had this giant massive belly and you could see her face before and after. It was just red and inflamed. And that inflammation is what's driving all the obesity and everything else. And if anybody wants to see a photo of Janice with her approval and also how her numbers improved over time, we have the link to that inside of the show notes that Dr. Hyman has put together. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. You're eating pounds of food every day. And that is what's landing in your gut and feeding your bugs. And if you're eating processed food, sugar, starch, bad fats, it's gonna be a problem. You're not gonna get better. So you need a whole foods diet. I call it the Pegan diet, which is kind of a joke, but